up guys and welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be a Q&A style with a little bit of a workout mixed in. Somebody asked on my last video or two videos ago, I forget which one, to write the workout that I did with Tito in the description box. So I'm gonna do that for this one too. Worked out with him again, Emma filmed it again. What I'm gonna do too is I know these Q&As can go on for pretty long on YouTube, on a YouTube video. So I'm gonna take most of the questions, as many as I can, answer them on here, and then the rest of them are gonna be on my podcast on Bucci Radio for the next solo episode that I do. So make sure you guys subscribe to Bucci Radio. It's on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, all of like the podcast channels. You can also find it on my website under the podcast section. Without further ado, we're gonna start answering a couple questions. Mrs. Carriger, what is one strength and one weakness that you've discovered since becoming an entrepreneur? One strength is thousand, thousand percent my ability to take action immediately. So I've never been one to just be worried about perfectionism. That's something that a lot of entrepreneurs have, I've noticed. I usually just like take something and run with it and do it immediately. Like once I learn something, I'll implement it like that day or the next day so I can actually learn it and absorb it in a better way than just reading it and be like, oh great, that's cool. I absorb it, I teach it to myself and I teach it to other people immediately. That's like one of the benefits I think of having a YouTube channel and a podcast. I can learn better because I can teach it immediately to you guys. So that's really something that I think is a strength of mine. Something that is a weakness, I would say is my uh, struggle with saying no often. I think that saying no is something that you should be doing more often than not. I think saying yes is really easy and it's really easy to want to say yes to everybody and accommodate people and not make people feel like you don't want to say yes to them because you want to say yes and help every single person. But a lot of the time saying yes to something means saying no to, to yourself and saying no to something that you actually want to do. So for me, that's definitely a weakness and a struggle that I deal with often, but I'm getting better at it. I said no the other day and it felt really good. So I was really excited about that. Do you and Brian ever actually fight? I ask because you guys are such a happy couple most of the time. <laughs> um, we honestly don't 
fight. I wouldn't call anything that we do fights because neither of us are argumentative people. Our natures aren't argumentative. So if we're ever like in disagreement, it's more of just a conversation. And for the most part, we are in disagreement. I'm sorry, we are in agreement 99% of the time on almost everything because we have like the same brain, so. Someone asked about periods and birth control. I know this is like a big question with athletes, with fitness, with exercising. A lot of girls lose their periods with increased exercise. I did lose my period for a year and a half when I was competing and then like getting recovered, but I now have very regular periods, even 14 weeks into this cut. I am on birth control, it's an IUD. So it's in your cervix and it just stays there for however long you want it. You don't have to take a pill. Um, I really like it. It's something I don't have to think about doing and it's not hormonal. So there's no uh, hormones involved in it. So when you're taking a pill, you're ingesting hormones. So an IUD, the one that I have anyway, does not have any hormones. You catch it, this is it, right? It's all like this, like when you jump, you land, right? It's all on the ground. <laughs> That's your little rest. So this how many reps in that? There's a lot of reps. Like what we do with the, you know, with the wall balls, the punching, all that. Right. So there's two reps. When you do the wall ball, it's Santos asked, how did you handle gaining weight mentally, especially for someone who has competed for the first time and saw how lean they are, um, wanting to put on more muscle, but it's hard to see the scale go up sometimes. And Allie, I totally know where you're at. I've totally been there. Seeing the scale go up is as someone who's so focused on seeing the scale go down for your competition, it trains your mind to think that scale goes down equals good and scale going up equals bad and scale going up equals like getting so far away from what you actually want. It was it was really difficult at first and a lot of people who I've talked to who have also gone through this were just really frustrated with the weight gain and like seeing more body fat being put on regardless of the fact that a lot of it, some of it is necessary, not all of it, some of it's necessary. And number two, body fat isn't bad. It's not a negative thing. When you're so focused on fitness and so focused on looking good and feeling good, um, body fat gain doesn't always mean feeling bad. I think that for me, I felt bad a lot. Like I felt lethargic, tired, puffy. And to me, that feeling came from not eating the best foods, um, eating kind of like crappy, not having enough water and like that added to the weight gain. So like the feeling bad for me was the biggest struggle. So I think honestly, the thing that helped me get back to it wasn't body fat loss. It was more being consistent, eating better foods, drinking more water and doing more things that are healthy and healthy for me and for my body, not just like things that were gonna help me lose body fat. Like there's a complete separation between what helps you lose body fat and what makes you be healthy. There's this like middle section that combine the two where body fat loss and healthy living combine and that's great and I feel like that's somewhat where I am now like maybe not towards like the end of this cut but um, that's like where my goal in life is to be and like have a lower body fat percentage and like eating healthy but a lot of the time higher body fat percentage also comes with feeling kind of crappy and not eating super healthy and then lower body fat percentage comes with like more vegetables and micronutrients and stuff like that to fill yourself up. So there's this like middle ground level that even if you have gained some body fat, finding like closer to that middle ground where the choices that you make are 
are choices that will help your health. I think that's where you're gonna find like that happiness and that feeling of um, consistency and like confidence. Like that's where all that comes from. What do you think about intermittent fasting? Um, I have never, I've tried intermittent fasting a little bit. I didn't like do it for too, con too long um, or consistently enough to really see differences or like the variables that were going into like those days that I was doing it. I was just trying to push my food back so I could have bigger meals. I honestly, personally for me, I am a like morning midday eater, not necessarily a night eater. I think that intermittent fasting helps you be less bloated. It helps you feel like you can eat more later on in the day. At the end of the day, healthy choices and calories in, calories out are what are going to determine body composition and fat loss, macros, protein, carbs, and fat. It doesn't necessarily make a difference when you're eating them, I think, personally. And intermittent fasting works to an extent where it might help with diet adherence, which is the biggest factor in whether or not you're actually going to see changes in your body. So diet adherence could help some people with intermittent fasting. I would check out Whitney Simmons' video on that. I think she did a really good video where she did intermittent fasting for five days. If you guys don't follow her, make sure you follow her. She has awesome stuff. And she went through like the whole process, what she liked about it, what she didn't like about it. Brian did a video about that as well. I'll put the two videos in the description box with the, I haven't tried it myself personally or long enough to get it, make a good opinion on it and form a good opinion on it for myself. But if it's something that you feel interested in, honestly, go ahead and give it a try. I would give it a try for a week or so and see if you like it. The first few days you'll probably feel like crap because your body's not adapted, but your body adapts to literally anything that you do for a long period of time. So give it a try, see if you like it. I probably won't do it because I just like eating in the morning and in the middle of the day. <laughs> Six, 
Seven, chest up. Eight, chest up. Nine, on your own. Ten, five more. Three, open. Four, open. Five, round up. Four, five. Get all the way here. Six, seven, eight. There it is. So you're that one. Much better. Oh, hang out there for a second. Over here. 13, drop. 14, drop. 15, good. Seven. Five, good. Four, three, open. Two, open. One. My girl Des B asked, What ignited you to stop competing and live more of a healthy lifestyle? Saying that way just because competing is a very extreme part of fitness. And honestly, the thing that ignited my fire to stop competing was really, truly, honestly, there's two different things. One thing was because I felt like I have this, not responsibility, but kind of like a responsibility to be a role model on the internet because I have people who watch these videos and there's a lot of you guys and it's like, I feel like competing for me wasn't showing like the healthiest way for a large majority of people to go about fitness. I think it's entertaining. I think it's fun to watch. I think it's fun to do. I think it's really, it's, it's fun to watch for like discipline and motivational purposes, but not like real life, here's how you actually do things for yourself that I wanted to be a role model for purposes. I'm still like working towards that every single day in my own life and teaching you guys and showing you guys, leading by example, I suppose I could say. I mean, I'm a human, so it's not always, it shouldn't always be leading by, by example because it shouldn't always be like you taking things that I do or another YouTuber does and implementing them into your own life. But a lot of the time that is how it works. It is like you see these people doing certain things and you're like, oh, I should do that for myself. So I am always like trying to combine like what I would recommend to other people with what I do for myself. And competing wasn't necessarily working for that bigger purpose for me. And that's where I wanted to go. And then number two, I have goals for myself, like getting a really fast metabolism, building more muscle, losing some more body fat, being stronger, being more athletic, and competing was not helping any of that at all. It was actually just making it worse. So losing body fat, yeah, but slowing metabolism down for sure. Like my metabolism is slow because I competed so much and that's not something that is like what my continued and further long-term goals are. So it just wasn't conducive to reaching those goals for myself. My shoulder stays over my wrist and my wrist is open. When I come up, my elbows come forward. I go down in a straight line, right? it's coming this way, I'm trying to come down, that's where the wrist is bending more and more and more, you can't do it. Straight up, that's it. Okay, now go straight down, pushing the elbows back. Now come up, flex, yes. Perfect, that's all I want. That's it, there, and then there. There, beautiful, that's the movement. That's all I want right there. Make sure that your back, your lower back should almost rub the bench as you go down. That's how close you want to be. Perfect. Perfect. You said you couldn't do bench dips. No, that's Okay. You're doing them. All right, 10. Rhythm it up. Nine. Up and down. Breathe in and out. Go back. Four. I'm going to stop you. Five. Six. Keep them on that. Go. Better. Seven. Eight. Nine, ten, one more, last one, hold it. All the way up, lean back, hold it, five seconds. One, one thousand, perfect. Two, one thousand, good separation. Three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, let's go. Eight, hold it, seven, shoulders back, six, shoulders back, five, shoulders back, four, chest back, three, chest back, two, Last one, hold.
now that it's the end of this video addressing the accusations of me being a scammer on the internet <laughs> I wanted to make this video many times but I honestly haven't found the words to explain how I feel about that situation if you guys don't know people think that I'm scamming people for their money by charging for a product and service that I've created I am just all about making money lots of other things including I am not fit enough to speak about nutrition. Clearly, I can't stay on a program long enough to have sound advice, so I shouldn't even be giving advice. Uh, why am I charging so much for a program on how to gain followers? All of these things that I truly would need a whole separate video to break down each of these accusations about how ridiculously ignorant they are. But I really truly don't want to do that because I don't enjoy negative spaces. I don't enjoy gossip. I don't care about like what other people think of me. Is it my business? Um, I don't like gossiping about other people. I just really don't think it's a productive use of my time or your time or anybody's time. Some people think it's like the only use of their time that they have because that's all they spend their time doing. <laughs> but. I truly don't want to spend a long time breaking down all those things because they're very they're very ignorant, um, number one. Number two, they speak badly. A lot of them are, speak badly about me as a person, talk about my body, the way that I look. A lot of them don't really have any idea what they're talking about and it would just take a really long time for me to explain the ins and outs of my business, the way I run it, what my goals are for my clients. I can say that my goal for every single one of my clients, every single person that purchases something from me is that they get what they're paying for, they get the result that they're looking for. So whether it's gonna be the social media course, um, it's not just about gaining followers. Like my goal for every single one of them is to build a business out of it so they get their investment back. They continue to grow a sustainable and viable business for themselves and be, like find their happiness, because that's what I did. I also feel like there's a lot to talk about in terms of like what goes on in my head and a lot of other like creators or other people that are building businesses on social media. I think that people just assume that because maybe I'm in the category of Instagram fit chick, that that's all that I am, that all Instagram fit chicks are stupid. 
that I'm not credible, I don't have enough knowledge base to be selling stuff. A lot of Instagram fit chicks, whatever the fuck you wanna call it, do do scammy things. All this stuff that I just really don't, ugh. It just makes me so angry to talk about this, but I really don't want to. Just let you guys know, be really clear. I might continue this on the podcast. I have talked about this on the podcast before, like a few times, I have addressed this, but honestly here on YouTube addressing it is not the best place to do it. I think that people come on YouTube and they search through the comment section for negative things that they can latch onto and they can piggyback onto and they also go on Twitter to get likes and retweets on all the mean things they say about people on the internet and on Instagram. It's just a really ugly space and it's like an ugly personality trait I think of a lot of people that spend their time doing that. So that being said, I am confident in my knowledge, I'm confident in my abilities to give my clients the results that they're paying for. That's all I'm gonna say about that. I'm not scamming anybody, I never, I never have. I don't think you can find anybody that says that they've purchased something from me and they didn't get what they paid for out of it. It, that, yeah, that's, all I gotta say about that. So sorry for anybody who, who does think that. I've never meant to come across that way. I understand that on video and on YouTube and Twitter and all these places that voice can get misconstrued, the way that you say something can get misconstrued, and the way that you take what I'm saying here has to do with the rules that you live by. Like the life rules that you've created in your head or society's created for you or your family's created for you that you live by. And maybe they're not the same as mine. Everything gets perceived differently by people. That's why our country's 50 50 split Republican Democrat, like even the independents, and there's different opinions on everything, and not everybody has the same ideas and the same thoughts and the same thought processes about things. So I can't please everybody. I can only stay here um, and be the best role model, be the best educator, um, continue to educate myself, continue to be better for you guys and be better for myself. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. I'm going to be continuing this Q&A on my podcast, so I'm gonna record this on Sunday, the rest of this the rest of this episode, so I'm excited about it, but it's gonna be like an hour long, responding back to a bunch of other questions, a bunch of different questions. Um, maybe continue on this subject, I'm not really sure, depends on if it comes up again, but I'm excited to continue the Q&A on the podcast, so go check it out and subscribe below if you're interested and thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the workout. It's in the description box. Check you in the next video.